All right, so this is exponential functions number five. This is rules of logs. How many of you have heard of a log rhythm before? Right? I think it might be the first time. Why am I giving it to you this year? Because next year you're gonna roll into algebra two and you're gonna do probably two to four weeks on log rhythms. All right, it's gonna be tough only because they're kind of out there in a way. They don't sort of make concrete sense to us. All right? Yeah. And so I'm gonna to try to explain it in an introductory way. I don't know if I'm gonna do it justice, but I'll do my best. Okay, so what are you talking about? Um, let's go back to exponential functions. What is an exponential function? So you know some different functions now, right? Functions are things in math that produce certain graphs, and that's the easiest way to think of it. There's a function that produces, I'm gonna do the graph in the air and you tell me what kind of function it is. The graph looks like this. What kind of function? I heard linear. Did I hear linear? Yes, and you're right, because this is a, I'm trying to draw a line in the air, you with me? So that's a type of function. When you graph it on Desmos, it produces a line. It's a type of function. You know some other functions. What type of function produces this graph? A quadratic function. So that's two functions you know. You know linear, you know quadratic. You with me? You see how this builds up? Now we did another type of function, the exponential. So here's the curve I'm gonna to try to draw. This one's harder to draw in the air. It goes like this at first, then all of a sudden it transitions and goes like that, straight up. You with me? Type of function, exponential. Everybody say exponential. So at least three types of functions. When I taught pre-calculus, I would teach like 12 functions and ask you to memorize all the different graphs. So you could see the graph and go, oh, linear function, quadratic function, right? That was my goal. Because once you have these tools, it's like a toolbox, right? Now you can see graphs and you go, well, I know what kind of function we're dealing with, right? And what is it? It's an equation that produces that graph, right? That's what a function is, all right? And so we use sort of big language in math, but that's the way it all comes down, and it's not that complicated if you can organize it that way. If you can't, it seems crazy hard, okay? So now you're an exponential function. What makes it exponential? The variable is in the power. You've never had a variable in a power before. You've had power two or three, something to raise to a power. You've seen exponents like that, right? But you've never all of a sudden had a variable sitting in the power position. This is what makes it exponential because small number changes, one, two, three, four, five, as X changes as you go through the X axis, this number starts to spit out bigger and bigger numbers that go up to the moon. Does that make sense? That's how it produces that, that graph. Okay, with that said, it becomes very complicated to deal with all the big numbers that these things produce. So before calculators, so to speak, we came up with this whole idea of logarithms. And logarithms was a system for us to use calculations to help us make these large calculations for exponential functions. Now we use calculators and you can plug in, you'll see the log function on your calculator when you turn it sideways. Maybe you have to go to the second menu, but the log is on your calculator now. You with me? So it's somewhat old, but we haven't ever abandoned it, right? We keep this log-based system. So maybe the easiest way to do it is to run through some vocabulary and maybe just read to you these statements. So your brain, maybe I'll have you say some back to me or something. So your brain can start to say log here and there, right? When I was a student, you know, I thought we were talking about trees, right? Logs, right? It was dumb. Okay, they're not related at all. All right, but that's what it sounded like to me, right? We're talking about logs all of a sudden, trees. They're not, it's a log function uh, short for logarithmic. All right, everybody say logarithmic. You with me? Okay, a little bit weird. Okay, um, so here's some rules of logs. I'm gonna read you these. The school G that I give you is light. It's gonna practice these a little bit, almost identical to what you see, and if you keep these in front of you, you'll be able to pick the right answers, etc. okay? Um, and it's just a practice looking at the notation. So here's some rules. B has to be greater than one. You'll see B used down here. See B, B, see it all through, B. The rule is for this whole set of rules, it's greater than one. And M, N, and K can be any <laughs> real numbers. M and N are positive. So M anytime you see M and N, M and M and N, I can't say that, bless you. Um, they're positive. 
Oh, are you coughing? Are you coughing or sneezing? Sorry. Okay. Do you, and you, can, do you need a drink of water or anything? You're welcome to if you need to. Okay, just go if you need it. Okay, so here's what this one says. Log base B. Why is it base? Because it's lowered a little bit there. You know how we have superscript. This is superscript up. There's a subscript where you drop it down also. So this B is dropped down a little. So log base B of two numbers, M times times N equals. This can be manipulated according to the rules of logs. We can take the log base B M and add it to the log base B N. So two things being multiplied in this section of the log setup for format can be split apart with logs and put separately and added and they're equal to each other. Crazy so far? Okay, is your brain like I've never seen this before? And so I'm just giving you an introduction. So when you roll into, maybe you have Dr. Xi next year, or maybe you have Miss uh, Leon, or I forget, there's a couple other Algebra two teachers, maybe Cazares, if, and they start talking about logs, at least your brain goes, I've heard the word before. That's all I'm going for, okay? It's just to, to break the ice. So here's another one. If you have a log base B of two numbers divided by each other, N divided by N, it can be split apart and subtracted. Notice this one was added, this one was subtracted. How do you read it? Log base B of M minus log base B of N. Okay, here's the next one. Log base B of M to the K power can be rearranged. The K can come out front like this, and it can be K times, which is the power times log base B of M. It's a literal legal rule in math. You can switch these around and they're equal to each other. And in your Algebra 2 class, you'll be given one thing and manipulate it to the other. You'll be given this one and manipulate it back and forth. All right? And as long as you go, let me just keep a list of the rules in front of me. At first, you're going to do it mechanically, I think. I don't know that you're understanding any of it yet. Okay? Just say that at first. So here's another one. Log base B of 1 is 0. Log base B of B is 1. Log base B of B to the K power is equal to the power K. Strange until you start applying it, okay? B, and this is a caret here, raised to the power. So this whole thing is up in the superscript here. B raised to the power, log base B of K is equal to K. All right, so that's all a little crazy right now. Let's do one example for this school G and for this lesson to kind of illustrate What's the purpose of log? Because part of your brain is going, what the heck is a log? What is it, right? And that's, I don't know if that's so easy to answer, but let me try it with these two examples. So the first thing is convert the following to logarithmic form. So here's something you know. It's an exponential equation. It's two to the x power equals five. What is that asking us? X is unknown variable. We wanna know to what power we have to raise two so that five is produced so it's not an even number right two raised to the power three would be two times two times two would be eight two times two is four and four times two is eight so it can't be three because eight's too high if it's two here two raised to the power two would be four that's too low so we know that this variable is between two and three two point something are you with me? And it's complicated. It's probably an irrational number, and it's got a lot of decimals after that two point blah, 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 blah. To figure this out, we came up with the whole log charts. We mapped it all out, put them into the calculator. Now it used to be in a book. You'd open up this whole book, and it had all the charts, and you'd read down and find out what this would be, and you'd know now what x was, and you could go and extrapolate and find all the decimals. Now your calculator has all the charts in it, so you just push the button. Converting it to the log form means the x, because that's what we're trying to find out, equals a log, the base goes in here, of 2, and the 5 comes here. And it's literally asking now, 2 raised to what number, x in this case, will produce a 5. And so if you go into your calculator and you put in log base 2 of 5, it'll spit out the value of x that it has to be to raise the 2 to to produce 5. Kind of makes sense for the moment. Anybody want to try to restate it? What is this asking us to do? You want to try to restate what this equation is asking us to do? 
little bit of pressure. Lizette, you want to give it a try? <laughs> right? <laughs> I hear you. If you had to explain to me, what is this equation asking us to find right here? How would you explain it? Because this is an equation. There's an equals. There's something on the right, something on the left, and there's a variable, right? So this is an equation. What is this equation asking us to find, in your own words? Um, to find the variable that equals 5. Good. The variable that in the power position... 2 would be raised to to equal 5. Fair enough? And I'm kind of adding a little bit to what you said, but basically what you said is right. What variable am I finding for x that 2 raised to that power would then produce 5? You kind of with me on this? Kind of complicated, but then again, kind of reasonable because you're solving for x in a way. You want to know what x is. It's the same old equation we've done, just a little bit more complicated. So by rearranging it into this format with a log base 2 and a 5, if we plug this into our calculator, x spits out and we know what that value is, all right? So this is, becomes the power of this, where we can't really solve this without that log table. We don't, it's too complicated. We'd have to do a lot of guess and checks to get, we'd have to start typing in 2 to the 2.5. Oh, that's close. 2 to the 2.45, right? We'd have to keep going and keep going and just to guess and check. This will take us directly to the answer. Okay, so the power of the x equals log of the base of base two of five. That's not really well written. I like this better. Two raised to what number is five? That's what's saying here. Two raised to what number is five? That's what this whole thing produces. Okay, now let's go the opposite direction. Convert the following logarithmic form to exponential form. So here's the log form, and it looks a lot like what we ended up with here. X equals log base two to, uh, of six. We're gonna rearrange this. What we're really saying is two raised to what power is six. And now we're just going backwards with the format. So we're rearranging the formats to go back to the exponential power. And what is it really asking? It's asking two raised to what power produces six. This will get you directly there with your calculator. As long as it's a log base two of six, you type that in and it will spit out the X. This is the exponential function that our brain has known so far in terms of what is an exponential function look like. It looks like this to start with. We go into the log function to actually solve it. So two raised to what number is six? Okay, what do you think of all this? Is this enough? I think this is enough for you to do the Schoology. And if you mess around with it and muck it up, and I have the solution manual in there too for that one, the video, right? You can watch for those. Uh, I think it gives you a little bit of insight into next year. Does this make you excited about Algebra 2 or not excited about Algebra 2? <laughs> right? Um, you know, there's certain people of us, certain humans out there that actually love this kind of stuff, right? And there's certain people out there of us that are like, I'm not sure I love this stuff so much. You with me? I still think your whole goal in life is to figure out who you are, right? If you're that person that loves it, go into engineering, go into computer science, go into these kind of things, right? If you're not, of course, go into the things that you love, right? That's really what you're trying to do in life. So, but I think mechanically speaking, we ask you to try to do it in school just so you can practice it a little and get some flavor of it, right? Okay, so I think this is enough for you to do your school G's, right? Okay, go ahead.